Welcome to another one of my videos where I will show you an excellent and highly useful circuit. The device you see here was shown on my channel way back when I did not take my channel too seriously and uploaded very few videos. Times certainly have changed since then. I also made changes to this unit since that video was made. This device takes very faint sounds and amplifies them to very high levels. Sounds that you would not be able to hear or barely hear at a distance become very clear. The circuit was found in a book called 101 Spy Circuits for the Evil Genius. My book is in storage so I looked over the entire circuit and drew up a schematic to show you. You can also look through this book at Amazon.com. The circuit is shown in the beginning of the book. There are two parts to the circuit, the main unit you see right over here and the parabolic mic attachment which I'll show you very shortly. Let's go over the circuit first, take a closer look at everything, then I'll show you how well it works. For this circuit you're going to require two LM386 audio amplifying ICs, two 16 volt, 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, two mics, two 104 capacitors, Ceramic or Mylar are fine, it's 0.1 microfarad each, two 16 volt, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, between pin 1 and 8 on both sides for the left. This one controls the left earphone and this one controls the right. 1K resistor, quarter watt, one here, one there, two 50K potentiometers. I used logarithmic, you can use linear and you're also going to need a 9 volt battery snap an on off switch, it could be a push button as well as a couple of other things which I'm going to show you the circuit is very easy to put together pin 1 starts here pin 8 is here both of the IC's do not use pin 7 the ground is connected to pins 2 and 4 on both and the power supply goes to pin 6 on both 9 volt power supply once the switch is turned on also feeds into the 50k pot as you can see on both sides this is a stereo amplifier so if you look here I put a letter A between the mic and the 1k and I put a letter B over here and the reason why I did that is because the unit could be used as shown or with a parabolic mic so let's take a look at something else now now in order to switch between the internal mics of the listening device and the parabolic mics, there's two ways that you can do that. Now I'm going to show you the way that I did not do it first. Over here uses a female jack, 5 pin. At the time I only had a 3 pin jack, so I did not use this method. I used a double pole double throw switch, which I'll show you in a minute. The two mics located inside the parabolic dish are going to be connected using a eighth inch stereo jack. The left mic connects to the tip. The right mic connects to the center sleeve. Both of the grounds on the mics get connected together to the sleeve portion right here. Once this jack is inserted inside the female connector, what happens, there's a connection between pin four and five that exists. There's continuity between those two pins. There's also continuity between pins 2 and 3 when nothing is plugged in. As soon as you plug the jack into the connector, what happens, the connection between 4 and 5 separates and the connection between 2 and 3 separates, allowing all the audio to only go through this connection here into the parabolic mic. You're going to have to cut right over here. You could see B and A. Make a cut there, make a cut here between the 1K and the mic. So you're going to take the cut on the left side coming from this direction which is the left mic, alright? You're going to take that cut and you're going to connect it to the one that goes to the tip which is the one that sticks further out and you're going to connect it right here to pin 5. So the wire on the left over here that you cut that's dangling is going to go to pin 5. The other wire right here from pin 4 of that female jack is going to connect 
to the mic that says left. You're going to do the same thing over here. The one at the bottom goes to the right, which is number two. So over here, you're going to make that cut, take the wire on the left, connect it to pin two, and then pin three, you're going to connect to the wire to the mic. So once you plug it in, the parabolic mic is active. Once you unplug it, what will happen, the parabolic listening device will become deactivated and the internal mics in the listening device will be turned on. If you do not have this 5-pin female jack and only a 3-pin, the next thing you can do is right over here. This is what I did because at the time I did not have a 5-pin female stereo jack. You could take a double pole, double throw switch. The center terminals are isolated from each other. When you put the switch in one direction, the common connection has continuity of one side and it opens up the other. You flip it the other direction, you have continuity on this side, and then this side opens. So you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to take the common from A, cut the wire. Remember the common is the one coming from the left with the 1K and the 104. Connect it there. You're going to take the common over here from the 104 and 1K on the left for B connect it there and then you're going to feed each one out to the parabolic mics on one side and then the opposite side will go to the built-in mics. When that double pole double throw switch is pushed in or it's toggled you can switch between both sets of mics. Let's take a closer look at the entire setup. Okay as you can see here I decided to use a nice little Altoids tin for the project housing using a unibit to ensure the holes are cut nice and clean without distorting the thin sheet metal. I cut the holes for where the potentiometers go on each side. Over here is the output to the earphones. Now it's even better if you use a very small headset. By doing so you block out ambient sounds and only hear what the device is picking up. This side here you can see the on off switch and this jack is where I plug in the parabolic mic attachment. Each end I drilled holes and I installed the left and the right mics and in the middle is where I could switch between this output and these internal mics. So I could push there, you'll see it rise up. See it's higher up and I could push again and now it's down. Let me open it up and show you the inside. Okay, you can see over here both ICs are mounted at the top on the prototype board. Keep in mind that board is not connected directly to the metal housing. There's a very thin layer of dense foam that's glued to this metal can and then there's three little drops of E6000 clear adhesive that hold the circuit board in position. You do not want anything shorting out. This switch is glued to the center of the can in the bottom. There's one jack, it only had the three pins, and this one here had three, which is why I use a switch. The 9 volt battery, let me pop that out. You can see I put a nice little foam padded section at the bottom. You need a 9 volt battery snap as well. And the cover has a matching foam section. This way it doesn't bang around when you're holding it in your hand. You want that battery to be nice and secure. Let's take a look now at the parabolic mic. You're now looking at the parabolic assembly that I made. This will plug directly into the unit. The original video uploaded a few years ago used a very small bowl about that big. It was stainless steel. It was a partial parabolic. It did have a flat bottom, but it did work extremely well considering it wasn't the bowl that I wanted. Now the bowl that you see here is actually from a light fixture. The bottom section right there in the middle was flat, so what I did is I hammered it out so I could have that nice curved shape throughout. Let's take a look at the other side. All right. 
over here you could see where I took the area that was flat, hammered it out. It's nice and curved now. It matches the curve of the rest of the bowl. I found a utensil that was a spatula. I cut it off, bent it, drilled and riveted into this parabolic dish. There's a nut that holds on the inside. Over here, let me show you that again. That part that you're looking at right there, I removed from an old car. It's an antenna that was screwed in. Cut it to the right length, bent it, and then I wrapped my cable around it, nylon tied it, and made sure the left and right mics were positioned in the right spot inside the parabolic dish. That is very important. You want to take a laser and you want to put it at a 90 degree angle to the plane of the parabolic dish. So if you come in straight down perpendicular to that plane and you direct the laser and go all the way down towards the bottom, you want to see what direction those beams are traveling. And that's how I established the proper height for those mics. It's a good idea to leave extra wire at that end so you can go try it out. If you don't think it's sensitive enough, you can move those mics a half of an inch this way or you can move them a half of an inch that way until you fine tune it to where the performance is as good as you can get it using that parabolic dish. Now the reason why you have the potentiometers, two of them, is to be able to balance the inputs. So both of these mics are not going to be identical just like those. So this allows you to slowly adjust both mics until you hear the same in each ear. I'm going to put this right against my chest right now just to show you how sensitive it is and you're going to hear my heartbeat very loud and very clear. Alright, the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the cable from the parabolic dish, plug it in right here, and I'm going to make sure the dish is turned on and the mics are off, push the button, popped out, turn it on, and before I do that, what I'm going to do, put that over here, I'm going to go outside, position the small AM radio about 80 feet away from this parabolic listening device, put this on very, very low. You're not going to be able to hear it. The camera is going to be on, letting you hear what I hear, and then you're also going to hear what I'm listening to from this dish. Let me show you exactly how I have this set up. I have the parabolic mic plugged into the unit. The parabolic mic is turned on and the mics that are built into the unit are turned off. I equalized both of the mics so I have the same amount of gain on each. I plugged in a eighth inch stereo jack splitter. Very important, I need to hear what's going on as well as record it at the same time. Now over here, this is a special cable that I designed. What it does, it allows you to take a stereo output, left and right channels, it combines them into one channel and allows you to plug it into any recording device that has a microphone input. Normally you cannot take the output with left and right stereo and plug it into a microphone jack. It'll be too strong and you'll have nothing but distortion. This cable allows me to have very high quality audio saved to this digital recorder. If you're interested in a cable like this, please refer to the link I placed in the video description area. Now let me go outside and demonstrate. All right, let's listen to my feet walking across grass using the camera's mic. Now we're going to listen through the parabolic mic. All right, the radio is on the fence. That's as loud as it's going to be. I'm going to be standing about 80 feet away, maybe a little further down by that tripod, and we're going to be listening with the parabolic mic. The radio is straight ahead. There is some traffic noise right now. It's around 5.30. Let's give it a try. Right now, using the camera's microphone, you could barely, barely hear anything coming from that radio. Now I'm going to switch 
to the parabolic mic. I just repeated this test in an area with no traffic and no wind, what you just heard would have been crystal clear with nothing in the background. And you could have acquired the audio at a much greater distance. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.